would like to give the floor to uh, his uh, Excellency Ambassador Mohan Pieris, the permanent representative of Sri Lanka. You have the floor, Ambassador. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it has been said that the world is overarmed and peace underfunded. It is well known that conventional weapons are still the principal means of armed violence and conflict worldwide. Small arms and light weapons in particular are used to commit a significant share of homicides every year. They're often readily available, they're cheap to purchase and simple to handle, even for children. Easy to conceal, easy to traffic and exceptionally durable. They cast a long shadow in many world regions long after armed conflict has subsided. Ironically, the UN Charter does not forbid its members to own and use conventional weapons insofar as they are in conformity with international law. It is therefore not difficult to discern why the term arms control or arms limitation are more often used than disarmament when referring to conventional weapons. Mr. Chairman, we have, however, endeavored to mitigate the situation by following the adoption in 2015 of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development includes which tar target 16.4 for the significant reduction of illicit flows of arms by 2030. In this regard, Sri Lanka wishes to reiterate the urgent need to strike a balance between the legitimate needs of self-defense and the imperative to prevent the misuse of conventional weapons. We also wish to underline at this juncture the need for the full and effective implementation of the program of action and the international tracing instruments which provide a framework for weapons tracing and forms a vital tool in the implementation of the program of action. Mr. Chairman, we remain deeply concerned over the illicit transfer, manufacture and circulation of small weapons and light weapons. The excessive accumulation and uncontrolled spread to many unauthorized recipients in different parts of the globe continue to foil conflicts. We welcome the consensus achieved during the bi eighth biennial meeting of states in July of 2022. Further, Sri Lanka appreciates any measures aimed at strengthening coordination with national focal points for the implementation of the POA. We also underscore the need for building the national capacity for weapons mark marking, identification, and tracing, which can facilitate regional and international bodies to enhance measures to identify cross-border trafficking, strengthen concerted initiatives to regulate international trade, and ensure effective control of illicit arms and light weapons. We recommend strengthening border control, encourage international cooperation, implement effective marking and tracing systems, target and disrupt financial networks that support illicit trafficking, strengthen the legal frameworks, criminalize illicit trafficking with serious sanctions. In this context, Sri Lanka supports the proposal to establish a standing dedicated fellowship training program on small arms and light weapons, particularly for developing countries, and encourage the early implementation of such a program. Mr. Chairman, Sri Lanka recognizes the need to fill the global gaps in through life ammunition management and emphasize the maintenance of effective control and to also provide the necessary financial and technical assistance in capacity building to states to enable effective global action to address the challenges posed by conventional weapons throughout its life cycle. We note the successful deliberations of OEWG on conventional ammunition and its recommendations for the Assembly to adopt a set of voluntary political commitments as a global framework for throughout life ammunition management. Mr. Chairman, Sri Lanka uh, became a state party to the Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons in 2004. We recognize the unique platform it provides for deliberation and negotiation. Mr. Chairman, let us commit ourselves to the responsible use, trade, and regulation of conventional weapons. By doing so, we not only safeguard our collective security, but also honor our shared commitment to peace, to human dignity, and international cooperation concertedly as a community of nations. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Sri Lanka for his statement. And now 